All right, man, we back. Good fellow Sports TV. Appreciate everybody for checking in. And last yesterday, Jamal Murray scored another 50 piece. I think he scored a 50 piece in game four. I think he scored a 44 in game one. And I think he scored another 42 in like game five. I think it was. Last night was was game six. But first we're gonna talk about what the Mavericks had beat the LA Clippers with a healthy Luka Donatich and a healthy Christoph Persingas. Yesterday, the L.A. Clippers did advance to the Western Conference semifinals where they would fight, face the winner of Utah Jazz and the Denver Nuggets. I think Game 7 should be coming up Tuesday, and that's going to be fire because Mitchell has also been putting on the show, and, you know, Jamal Murray's been putting on the show. But let's talk about it. Check out our NBA Talk playlist. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you want to make a donation, cash app is Good 313 PayPal link in the description. Best way to donate personally is to share the video. And check out the channel out, too. It's Primary Detroit, Mercy Sports Talk. Just do it for the hell of it. But appreciate that love, man. We don't pay for screams or views or none of that, man. We do everything organically. And, um, and no interviews, neither. So, basically, everything is done on this channel. It's the strength of my mind and my brain. So, um, so appreciate everybody that support. But, um, yeah, it's all about the Clippers. I mean, I think it would have been more competitive. Serious, the Clippers got an issue, man. They they can't deal with the five, the big stretch forward or the five, whatever you want to call itself. They can't deal with Przingis. And I feel that Przingis played this series. They had won seven. And I just think it was a little bit too early for Dallas to uh, make this step. And I think Kawhi would have found a way to win. win. But yesterday, Paul George didn't have – nobody had a good game in the Clippers but Kawhi Leonard. He willed them to victory yesterday. You know, but then again, Dallas, you can't count on Trey Burke. He get also injured. Finley was injured. And also, you know, uh, Tim, Bra I mean, Tim Brown was dealing with an injury. I mean, Tim Hardaway was dealing with an injury, Jr. They was always – they was dealing with a lot of injuries, game time decisions. But even if they was 100% healthy, you can't count on Hardaway Jr. and Trey Burke to do what they do it did in areas of this of this series. All right, um, but you can count on Porzingis doing what he gonna do. You gonna count on Luca doing what he gonna do. But I just think it was a little bit premature for Dallas this year. You know what I'm saying? And I think for Dallas, I think what's gonna be the difference for them is what they add around Donatich and Porzingis, and what they need to add around them is a is a Clay Thompson type of two way guy. Not saying he got to be an all star like Clay Thompson, but you know to lock up and be able to shoot the three. That's it, three and D guy. And then also what they need, it's pretty good that what they got from Hardaway. You know, it'd be nice to bring Hardaway and Burke off the bench. What they need, again, at the three spot, they need a guy that, you know, can also can create their shot too. You know, you, can, you know, somebody that can also get their shot from the three spot um, and shoot that three and D. You know, if they can find somebody that can create for other players and, and get the job done and stuff for that situation, that would be nice. But I really think they need a, a rim protector in the middle. Uh, they need a Clint Capella. They need a Ben Wallace and Matumbo. That's what they really need. And I think they need to surround Donatich and, and Przingis with really good defend, defensive guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, Przingis is athletic enough to get out on the wing and defend a little bit. Um, so they need a guy in the middle that really can control the paint, that can, you know, on defense, who can rebound, and who can just put back. You know, JaVale McGee will be a really, really good, you know, fit for them over there. I think McGee is the type of guy he cheap. He can give you a couple minutes, or maybe they can find a guy in the draft later on in the draft that can you know, they can develop. Go Burke would be perfect over there. Somebody in the middle that can control the paint. Just putting defenders and shot makers around them on the edge. I think if you can move Finley, uh, Hardaway, and Burke off your bench, I think that's a great thing. You get in there, you get a, a guy next to Donatich who can shoot the three and defend. Really a defensive three specialist. You get another guy who can create a little bit. Uh, defend and shoot the three that's what they need they need more defensive uh, players and shot makers and they start lining up guys that can do the dirty work so Przingis and um and Donald can do the job and somebody that can play the middle they find somebody control that paint not necessarily got to start but they could throw in the middle and, and they can do the banging around that Przingis don't want to do they'd be fine so I just think it was a little bit premature but Clippers got an issue Clippers got to find somebody in the middle in the offseason that can really control the middle. Right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sign Montrezl Harrell back. Um, you know, I have to get somebody at the five spot who athletic, who can control the paint. You know, the Clippers need the same thing. They find that five, they'd be in business. But, you know, right now, nobody showed up but Kawhi yesterday, and that's the issue. Uh, Paul George is going to have to show up. If the Denver make it to the next round, that's the worst possible matchup for Denver. I mean, for the Clippers next round. But I think if, you know, the Jazz make it, they should be all right. But Denver, is they can't find an identity right now. You know, with Will Barton gone, Gary Harris trying to get back in. They trying to implement Michael Porter Jr. 
they can't find no identity right now. And at the end of the day, they're going to have to shave some of that talent down. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to feature Michael Porter Jr., then feature him. You know what I'm saying? If not, you know, don't play him. That's just how I'm saying. You know, don't play him. If you're going to feature him, feature him. You know, one, one place for him, get a shot. You know, Paul Millsap should take it. He should be gone this year. Jeremy Grant, bench player. So they got a few situ things that they need to situate around in Denver. Um, they just don't have a really good system right now um, offensively. You know, they don't have a good system. But as far as Jamal Murray, yeah, he's arrived. I mean, I mean, his ability to score the ball, would you like to see him facilitate a little bit more? Yeah, but really – they got a point center out there in, in Jokic, and Jokic is getting dogged out by athletic center. So he lost all that weight, and he still ain't athletic. That's the issue. They're going to have to find somebody else out there that can play with Jokic as well, um, that can be athletic out there, you know what I'm saying, with Jokic. But, yeah, they, they they out cold, you know what I'm saying? Jamal Murray out cold, you know what I'm saying? He was getting buckets. He was on. He shot. He went for 50 last night and missed seven shots. So I think he's definitely arrived, and especially if he can put on that clinic, a little bit of that clinic versus the Clippers if they do win or in game seven tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people going to realize that, you know, he a different type of Canadian. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the Canadian players have come over, Andrew Wiggins, um, who else we didn't have, uh, 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 Anthony Anthony uh, Bennett. There's a few other them other guys. I like uh, Gillespie Alexander too, but a lot of those dudes don't have a killer instinct, and that's the issue. Jamal Murray got the American like sniper killer instinct and his ability to shoot and score the ball. He not scared. A lot of them, the Canadian guys get a, a rap for being soft and not having that killer instinct. And, you know, what I'm saying he just, you know, he just got it. You know, you don't really see it with the Canadian, even Steve Nash. He could be a killer here and there, but he more was passive, you know, by nature. Jamal Murray has killer. You know, he's a killer, bro. And um, he's a sniper. And, you know, and you like to see that from him, man, ability to really put the ball in the hole and the ability to score and be aggressive. And that's what they just asked Andrew Wiggins to be, be aggressive, you know, show some, show some dog. He don't have no dog. So with Jamal Murray, he's showing a lot of dog, a lot of killer, and he getting in his groove, you know, when when the moment is bleak, when you about to go home and you find somebody to step up and they can take the big shots, they ain't scared to make the big shots, and then he can keep it rolling, then, you know, he definitely going to have a future as maybe being the best point guard, one of more, more the best combo guard in the league so he keep going on this man and hopefully somebody give him a little bit of help and then it'll be on like hot butter popcorn so let me know what y'all think about i thought about last night with jamal murray scoring another 50 ball he got 40 in another 40 point game and don't forget he only missed seven shots and he only missed three three pointers yesterday so look forward forward to game seven between him and donovan mitchell i think that's going to be a, a huge one and that may edge you know one of their names in playoff history uh, remember, Donovan Mitchell almost scored a 60 ball in game one, and they came up short. But also, let me know what you guys think about the Clippers and uh, Mavs. With the Mavs is one with a healthy Porzingis and uh, Luka Donatic. But I just think that it was the Clipper. The, it was a little bit premature for the for the Mavs. They got a little bit of work to do on that roster, and I think the Clippers got some work to do in the middle of their roster, as far as as far as you know, in the middle of that paint. So let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to check out our NBA Talk playlist. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Also got a Facebook group. All those links in the description. If you got business question, inquiry, response, your video quest, keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash App, PayPal, in the description. One time for the one time we don't.